That's right, Jay Grizz. It's a mock draft and not just a mock draft. A head-to-head. Me versus Andy. Mono v. Mono. Man versus man. Chump versus champ. I'm the champ. Check it out. Hey, Foot Clan, we have a great mock draft episode today, and we're also going to be covering the Tyreek Hill news and all of its fantasy implications. We've updated our rankings on the Ultimate Draft Kit. You can go check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. You get all the player profiles, videos, projected stats, and so much more, including a brand new mobile app for 2019. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Hey, this is Corey from San Antonio, Texas, coming from the Iron League of Record, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Got a great show today. I've got my game face out. You give me the stare down, the grimace, the growl. The, uh, the I call this the growl. the growl. I guess I'm being slightly intimidated both by your look and the glance of Jay Grizz. Quick, quick. Who's hairier? Who's hairier? Yeah. Jason or Jay Grizz? I was, uh, yes. Ooh, that's tough. Where? Uh, on top of the head. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jay Grizz got yeah, it. Yeah, get bodied on vacation. <laughs> yes, Jason is out today, but uh, don't worry, Foot Clan. It's good news for you. Um, it's the best news you've had all day. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing a head-to-head, mano we mano mock draft on the show. Mike and I are taking each other on. Brooks figured out our draft spots. It's a 12-team draft. We're doing that on the show shortly. It's going to be great. You guys can vote on who you think. Uh, well, I mean, easy vote. But, yeah, you can vote for Mike or myself. And uh, we're going to have some fun. It's been a little while since we did a live mock draft. So that will happen live on the show today. A couple of reminders as we kick things off. You can find us over on YouTube, youtube.com. That's where you see the growl. The fantasy footballers. Yeah, it was it was weird, Mike. I, I can't say I was scared of you. I was a little confused, a little bit. If you're confused, like I thought, maybe you needed medicine. Look, if you're confused, you're tilting at least slightly. Oh, it's get get in the mission head. Mission accomplished. <laughs> get in the head of your opponent. What's well, cool is if you do watch the show, which some of you do on YouTube, you can see the draft board as the draft takes place. Uh, Judge Giamatti does a good job of working that into the video, so you can follow along, see what picks we made, see who we passed on. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, and the community is jointhefoot.com. This show, I mean, we've got two things to talk about. We've got the the mock draft that's coming, but then we've got the big news yep. that we have to break down, and that is that the NFL is not planning to suspend Chiefs star wide receiver Tyreek Hill following its thorough investigation into allegations of child abuse. This smacked every analyst in the face when it broke yesterday, myself included. I had Tyree kill in several leagues last year, several keeper leagues. I didn't keep him in any of them. Those deadlines have come and gone. I lost Tyree kill. He's gone. Now he's back. Now he's going to play. Now speculation about Watkins and Hardman and the offense, it's done. So we're going to break down. We can break down each of those players. It's just a really confusing situation because as far as – The sources that I listen to, the sources that have been talking uh, in circles around the Kansas City Chiefs organization, this the team didn't expect this to happen. The team expected, hey, maybe we're gonna maybe it'll be four games. Now, and this was according to Rapshi, we'll give you the actual report if you haven't followed anything from yesterday. He said during its investigation, NFL spoke with multiple people on both sides of the allegations into the Chiefs wide receiver, including Hill. They did not get to talk to his fiance, Crystal Espinal. She didn't make herself available. It is completely closed as of now. Not suspended. The Chiefs came out and said they're welcoming him back with open arms. What is the risk that is out there for Tyreek Hill as it pertains to his availability this year? 
Uh, I feel very uh, uneducated to be able to really answer this question, but what we the facts that we do know as far as a criminal case that's closed, it is out of their hands. The NFL did cover themselves saying if new information comes up, they're going to be quick to react to that information. But as of now, you got to feel like that's a low percentage chance that something else is going to surface the because the the two people close closest involved in the situation Tyreek Hill and his fiance, they don't want to talk about anything. And if they're not willing to talk about anything, there's just we don't know what happened. This is an extremely polarizing situation. When I tweeted about all I, all I tweeted, I retweeted Rappaport's breaking the news with just emphasizing Tyreek Hill's going to play, no suspension. And the Twitter community is you get answers from good, you know, good he is not exonerated, but good. There was no evidence. So there's you can't do anything to somebody without evidence to the people who are, this is an absolute disgrace, and they're really upset about it. Our our job is to not necessarily comment on that. We, we just give you the facts and head off from there. So to me, you're talking low probability now that Tyreek Hill will receive any type of suspension the Chiefs will eventually re-sign him. They're going to wait till the the PR uh, hullabaloo dies down. Firestorm. Yeah, exactly. So maybe halfway through the season they're talking it. Because uh, he's in the last year of his rookie deal. Yeah, maybe they even wait until the the season is completed. Not not completely sure on that. It's a, it's difficult he, because it's compounded by the fact that there's a history with the player. Yes. If it was just like a one off situation, look, I I don't want people tried in the court of Twitter. I don't want people tried in the court of speculation. So I'm thankful that, you know, ground swell. Look, it's, it's not a good look for the NFL. The good look for the NFL, to me, the easy path for the NFL is the suspension and consequence side. So uh, we don't know anything. We don't know the details. None right. of us do. All we can do is talk fantasy. It's a fantasy it's show. It's not just us. Nobody. Yeah. There are two people who know what happened, and they're not talking about it. So ultimately, my, my thoughts and prayers are with the child, that the child is safe, that the of course. Kansas Department for Children and Families protects the child and that if there is consequences to be had that they come out if not then you know he doesn't deserve to be punished for something he didn't do and we move on fantasy wise we've updated the ultimate draft kit we've updated our projections for the chiefs you know a lot of this offseason was spent talking about the upside of Michael Hardman second round draft pick that they invested in the upside of Sammy Watkins a player who has uh, flashed at times but not been available at times now we have to take a fresh look at the Chiefs. Mike, how are you looking at the projection of Tyreek Hill? This was a player that in certain formats was the number one overall fantasy wide receiver. Uh, I think for a lot of experts, he's going to be number one on their bo boards sure. as of today. Yeah, I think I may have him lower than what the consensus actually ends up, and we'll, we'll see. The, the ultimate draft kit rankings are very fluid. He came in with my initial projections at number six. So he, I know Jason has him at four. Jason's not here. Okay, I have him at five. So he. So we all we all have what Hopkins ahead of him. I was going to say that the, what I consider to be the big four of the wide receiver position: Adams, Julio, Hopkins, and Beckham. I still have Beckham in that in that top tier. I don't think I, I assume that Jason is the one who has Beckham behind Tyreek Hill. Yeah, that makes sense. Those are the four I have ahead of Tyreek. But I put Tyreek in. I would put him in tier one with those sure, with that, those four guys. And the, the one the one other name that I didn't mention who's ahead of Tyreek Hill for me still is Juju. But it's – they're all – when it comes to fantasy football, I think all five of the – or all six of those players are going to be elite options. Yeah. I The fact of the matter is, is Tyreek was an absolute fantasy star last year. 12 yes. touchdowns. What was it? Over 1,400 yards yeah. receiving. Yeah, nearly 1,500. And, and this offense now, you take away one more variable for Mahomes' production – at the end of the day, though, we don't expect Mahomes to be able to go out and throw 50 touchdowns every no. season. So does it hurt Kelsey? There are a lot of people no. out there who, who have Kelsey maybe even higher statistically on the expectation he was going to get four to six weeks of being the main man. You don't think it affects him? Well, last year, Travis Kelsey put up over 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns in a full season with Tyreek Hill. So, yeah. so No, I don't think it affects him. I 
I didn't even really mo- modify Travis Kelsey's projections because he was I have I have him producing nearly what he did last year with just a, a little bit of regression. I mean, he's he's still number one. He is still the tier one tight end in my opinion. With with Ertz, er, Ertz is the number two tight end, but he's still not in the same tier as Travis Kelsey. I, I don't I don't think it affects Travis Kelsey at all. Yeah, I mean, basically, if you look at my projections, the Chiefs are not projected to do what they did last year. That's the number one thing. And if you went and looked at the game log of Patrick Mahomes over the course of the season, his averages, the ones that we're talking about being outlandish, no player ever repeats 50 touchdowns, no player ever repeats seasons like that, no matter how good you are, uh, it slowed down towards the end of the year. He wasn't throwing 330 a game necessarily. It was like 291 over his last certain amount of weeks. It slowed down a little bit. You started to see a little bit of pullback on Mahomes. Well, you also start seeing teams actually have film – on Mahomes, he's he's fantastic. You can't you can't stop him, but you can start planning. You can have a, a smarter plan of how you're going to try and slow him down. Still think they'll be the best offense in football. Still I do. think that I these agree. players will have great production. You have to now talk about you know Sammy Watkins doesn't represent the kind of upside anymore. Michael Hardman, we pulled him from our sleeper list because he's, the opportunity is simply not going to be what it would have been without Tyreek Hill. Miko Hardman to me was a uh, a player that was not going to really have to earn a starting job. He was just going to be thrust into it. And if like look what the Chiefs did in the draft, they didn't have a first round and they spent they traded up in the second to get Miko Hardman. They clearly thought they were not going to have Tyreek. They were Hill. with us. They knew that that the odds of having Tyreek back were low because the what the Kansas City Chiefs needed. They needed to draft defensive players. They didn't want to have to spend high draft capital replacing a wide receiver. They felt backed into a corner, and they went out and made that move. So now instead of just kind of walking his way into a starting job, now he's now he has to fight to get on the field. He's going to be the kind of player in year one that catches 30 to 40 passes. Agreed. And a handful of them are going to be for 96 yards and a touchdown because he's a burner. He's going to get loose. He's not going to be a focal point of the offense because you're going to have Damian Williams, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey, and maybe Demarcus Robinson ahead of him in the pe- pecking order. Yeah. So Hardman, unfortunately, not not a startable asset no. by any stretch of the imagination. No, but goodness, man, next season, once Mecole is acclimated to the NFL and this offense is Mahomes, presumably an extended Tyreek Hill, Potentially. Watkins and Mecole. Good luck. Oh, yeah, Kelsey. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, it gives the Chiefs leverage in the contractual negotiations to have drafted Mecole at that level. I guess a little bit. It it might, yeah. It does because they have have a little bit of depth at the position. You're not trying to tell Tyreek, oh, we're fine with Chris Conley and Demarcus Robinson. No. So, any other – Brooks, is there anything else that's like on the forefront of listeners' minds as it pertains to Tyreek Hill? I mean, they can go, they can look at the rankings on the website, but as far as question marks, I think you guys covered it. Okay, where did, where is Sammy now currently for you? I have him at thirty four, which might it might be a tad too low, but I think he's now that fringe, you know, three with upside on on a weekly basis. I'm trying to figure out where he is in our consensus. He's at 36 in our consensus. Right. Uh, I don't have mine right up in front of me, but he's got to be in that range. Yeah. I, I, I would imagine. I'm, I'm, I imagine I'm the lowest on him still. I would imagine, and I would imagine Jason is still. I have not Oh, yeah, I've got him. Mm, you don't want to know where I got him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You don't want to know. You want to know where I have him? I, 55. Oh, 55. I was a little shocked. Look, when we go in and do our projections, we go on and put stat lines. Yeah. So I'm putting stat lines for all these players. I'm putting Demarcus Robinson, you know, say what you will about him. He scored four times last year. He was on the field, 30-something receptions. I just 22. statted him out. I don't think Watkins plays a full season. That's, I, I just don't believe fair, in it. So, a fair thing to say. So how do I draft him to play a full season? He's done it one time so far. Yeah. Full season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's not a lot. That's not a lot. Okay. We're moving on. A reminder again, check out all of uh, – we updated the – we're going to update the Tyreek Hill 
put a Tyreek Hill video into the Ultimate Draft Kit. Yep. We pulled the Sammy Watkins video. We'll redo that one with the context that we have now. That's one of the things we do. We update all of the content no matter uh, what time of year. Keep it up to date. But we're going to get into this mock draft. Before we get into the mock draft, thank you for pulling back on hitting the button there and interrupting me. want to thank today's sponsor. Support for the fantasy footballers comes from Manscaped, number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Fellas, I'm here to tell you, and you, Jay Grizz, I'm here to tell you as well, you got to keep it tight. You got to keep it right. You got to keep things groomed. And look, maybe it's uncomfortable for you, for you to talk about it, for you to think about it. But I'm here to say it should not be, and this is something you should do. And Manscaped is the tool that you need to keep things clean. That's, they have redesigned the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary skin-safe technology, it's so this important. trimmer won't won't nick or snag. Look, we all shave the face. Well, I mean, not as much, but we've all cut the face. And with you this, gotta just, be safe. It's just a byproduct of shaving, and we've all been there. And Manscaped is trying to cut down on that, so they're saying accidents are a thing of the past. And they've got other products as well, like some anti-chafing deodorant and moisturizer for that sensitive area. You put deodorant on the armpits, there's other parts of you that stink too. Clean it up. And right now you can get 20% off plus free shipping and a free travel bag with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Thank you for the uh, energy that you brought to the back of the drop, Mike. Um, it's a head-to-head. We mm-hmm. haven't done this this season. Mm-hmm. I had a head-to-head with Jason earlier in the year when you were out. But we mono sh- mono. Thinking about it now, I mean, I guess it would mess up the mock draft, but it would have been a nice to get Jay Grizz in there because we know that he would just – Draft Bears. You would select all the Bears. Yeah, Trubisky in the first. We've seen him before. Okay, 12th team, half point per reception draft. Brooks figured out our spots, and, uh, well, Mike ended up at 107. I don't like to be at and 107. And then I'm at, I'm at 111, so I got the 11th pick in the draft. Snake draft, half point league. I cut the bench size down a spot, so there's four bench just for time so we can spend some more time talking about our picks. All right. A lot of you out there, I will say this momentarily before we kick the draft off. A lot of you out there, we, we'll, we'll do mock drafts a handful of times in the offseason. They're fun episodes. A lot of the times we do them as a team. The three of us will pick for one team so we can break down and analyze things. And sometimes people want us to always have our own team. We try to balance that out. You guys need to understand, if we have three people with three teams and you've got to draft 15 spots, 16 spots... That is a long time, and we don't get as much time when we're drafting individual teams to talk about the thought process and decision-making, which is the point. We're not mock drafting just to get this thing done. We want to you know, help bring to light how we draft, how we think about it so it helps you, um, and you can go mock draft. We always say it's one of the best things you can do. So in a head-to-head situation, we get to do that a little bit more. So here we go, 12-team draft, number one overall. Saquon Barkley, number two, Alvin Kamara. McCaffrey went three. Zeke, four. David Johnson, five. Lev Bell, six. Six running backs off the board. And here Mike is yeah. on the clock. It's your it, turn to talk. Your turn to pick. So this is unfortunate because when I'm, normally when I'm at seven, I'm hoping that somebody has decided to take the wide receiver and David Johnson is going to drop to me. That didn't happen. The, the other mock drafters went all running back. So now – I am staring down a decision of only three players, so I have it narrowed down. It's Melvin Gordon. Do I choose to accept the risk that Melvin Gordon goes full levy on Bell and I've set my first pick on fire and thrown it into the dumpster? My backup running back option would be James Conner because I firmly believe that James Conner is going to be a fantastic running back one this season. But those guys are not the top of their position so if I'm looking at wide receiver, it's Devontae Adams right here because he's my number one guy. I don't even need to consider the number two wide receiver because I have the, my pick of the litter, so to speak. Is that oh. where you're leaning right now then? Are you going to go I, wide receiver? I am leaning going with Devontae Adams. Th- this would normally be an auto Melvin Gordon pick for me. 
So the, do, is this but, a revealing moment for the Fantasy Footballers podcast? That it could be that you know Jason and I have spent most of the time talking about our expectations for Gordon. Here you are on the clock. And I'm you have I'm scared. You've got butterflies in your stomach. Yes, I, I'm more on the side. I of would Jason. take Gordon here. I'm more on the side of Jason that I am concerned that Melvin Gordon is going to, uh, as the the Jacksonville Jaguars lady said, take it to the limit. Complicate our fantasy football yes. lives. And well, you got to make the pick, my so friend. So just for for the the experiment of the draft as well, I'm going to go with Devontae Adams at the seventh pick, and we're, we'll see what happens with my team starting with wide receiver, even though Gordon was there. Well, there was a hope in my heart that, that Gordon would drop. That Gordon would drop to eleven because of the tumult. That was cut immediately. Did not happen. Devontae Adams, Mike, you took him at seven. Gordon went eight, and then DeAndre Hopkins. And Michael Thomas go nine and ten. This is a tough place to be on the board. I don't believe in James Conner. I don't. Uh, I don't believe that he belongs at one eleven. I believe he will be a top fifteen guy, not a top ten guy. So I don't really want to take him here. This is where you have to start staring down horrible, horrible decisions about players like Todd Gurley. I love Dalvin Cook. Could I? Could I take Dalvin wow. Cook here at one eleven? Uh, Joe Mixon is on the board as well. Wide receivers on the board, Julio, who I absolutely love. I think Julio has as good is a chance. Is he still your number one guy? Uh, Hopkins is still my number one guy. I think Julio has every chance to be that this year. Julio and Beckham are there, but so are Juju, Tyreek Hill, Antonio Brown. And just a reminder for the listeners, you are 11, so you are, you're basically right on the turn. There will only be two players in between your picks. And th this is tough because I want a running back. And I know James Conner is there, man. He's there for your pleasure. Yeah, yeah, he is. So is Todd Gurley. I, I know I'm going to get a great wide receiver on the way back. And I don't – look, I could go Julio Jones here and probably grab Tyreek Hill and start with Julio and Tyreek Hill on this team. Maybe that's the experiment worth taking and see what happens at the running back position later on. But I can almost see the future, Mike. And the future, my future at, at running back, if I do that, it's going to end up being <laughs> it's going to end up being rookies, right? It's going to be end up being Josh Jacobs and uh, David Montgomery or something, and I don't want to start another draft that way. So I'm going to commit to the running back position, which means deciding in my mind between Mixon, Cook, and Gurley. And um, in this draft, I'm going to take Dalvin Cook at 111. Wow! I know. Goodness! I'm going to make him a first round pick. I'm going to I'm going to put the crown on his head. I believe that Dalvin Cook is going to have a monster year. I would uh, be very happy. I think we've we've probably had enough James Conner water bets, so we, we don't have to go there. But right. but I think I, I like Cook more than Conner. So Dalvin Cook off the board. Julio goes next. Mixon goes next. Guess who's sitting there at 202? Odell Beckham. Yeah. Odell Beckham Jr., Juju Smith-Schuster, but also Todd Gurley. I could take the shot on the combination, but I've got a really, really long wait. At the wide receiver position. <sighs> <laughs> Tilting with the second pick. I'm going to take Todd Gurley for the first time this offseason. Tilting with the second pick. Oh, I almost got Connor. I'm going Cook <sighs> and Gurley back to back. Now you have an interesting situation, oh, Mike. Oh, this is ridiculous. Because you have to stare down Tyreek Hill in this draft. And the fact of the matter is, and this is full disclosure, ADPs, which is what the the other teams are drafting based on, it's not just they're not drafting by ADP. They're drafting by their team, their formation, and some algorithms that figure that out. And by the way, we're drafting on Sleeper, yes, which is where we do all our mock drafts. Their system's great. But in uh, in about eight hours, they didn't update. every Everybody's not drafting Tyreek Hill at the top. <laughs> so the truth of the, the matter is, Bye. you know, Tyreek might have gone already in – an ordinary draft. So yes. are you willing to go? I went running back, running back. Are you willing to go wide receiver, wide receiver here and go Devonte Adams and Tyreek Hill? Here's the problem. There is uh there's, there's still another wide there's receiver. Also Odell Beckham. Odell Jr. Beckham is on the board. He has thrown a giant, giant uh, problem at me. Let because, me read the other picks, by the way, after okay. I picked Gurley, it went Juju, Nick Chubb, James Connor. Yes, because you so, would have loved Connor to drop one more spot. Oh, that would that would have been an easy auto selection for me. I I really thought I was going to be looking at either going Travis Kelsey or Damian Williams, just taking 
uh, the best available of those two. I don't know how you don't and, take a wide receiver here. And then just playing the room, and because it's a head-to-head -head competition, I was going to end up with Tyreek Hill as my third pick, which was going to be pretty awesome. So I guess I'm committing to zero running back because I, I don't know how I pass Odell Beckham and have two of my top four wide receivers. And then Tyreek Hill – which will mean I have three top six wide receivers. And 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 for the integrity of the draft. Oh, come on! Boo! For the integrity of the draft. Boo! I have paused the draft, and I'm going to manually select Tyreek Hill Boo in this draft. Boo this man! You know that's the right decision here. You it's for you. That's right. But me having Devontae Adams, Beckham, and Tyreek Hill to start a draft is pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I wanted you to make a, a proper decision there between Tyreek Hill and your other pick, but we're going to let Tyreek Hill go off the board where he should. Fine. Look, he's not going to – 210. It could go at 210. He'll go before that, but fine. Yeah, he will go before that. So, sorry, Mike. I feel like we should have thrown this one to the judge who would have clearly ruled in my favor. Let's find out. Brooks, do you feel like that was the, the right call? That's fine. <laughs> So yeah. The, way way to be Switzerland. It's fine. Way to be Switzerland. Very judicial. That's I'm me. tempted That's to me. throw it to Al Borland. I I rarely have to do that, Brooks, but you're not pulling your weight on being decisive. Um okay, so Mike, you went with Beckham. So we went completely opposite philosophies. You have yes. Adams and Beckham. I have Cook and Gurley. Aaron Jones went next, Antonio Brown, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill. Do you think Tyreek will go ahead of Kelsey in almost every draft? Yes. Okay. Mike Evans, T.Y. Hilton to finish out the round. Fournette in the third, Damian Williams in the third. So you have three Chiefs going in a five-pick span. Adam Thielen, Omari Cooper off the board, Marlon Mack, George Kittle, and Mike, you're back on the clock. Yes. Talk about where your team is at. Talk about your decision-making process. So the starting with Devontae Adams and Odell Beckham is – I mean, I – didn't that, envision it. No, I, I did not envision that at all, but I'm extremely happy with it because the best part of the third round and for players who are starting wide receiver, wide receiver, there's a guy who is still in my top 12 at the running back position, and people are scared of him. I completely understand. Yeah, it's ad nauseum for me this offseason, but Devontae Freeman becomes an easy pick for me here because he's firmly entrenched in my running back one area as a, a, a not a tier one, maybe a tier three type of running back. But the fact that I start with two elite wide receivers and still a great running back option, my draft is off to, off to a hot start. So you're obviously, maybe it makes the question moot, but Devontae Freeman will be your one Yes, on your roster. You have Adams and Beckham, which make leaning on Freeman as your one easier, a little bit easier, easier to yes. bear. Uh, but with Freeman specifically, so that we can get into it on a player-by-player -player basis, are you going to be looking later in the draft to kind of protect yourself at running well, like back? Ito? Well, not necessarily with Ito, just just maybe overemphasize the running back because of you oh, starting oh, in the third round yeah. and, and because of Freeman's injury history. Yes, it, it, it gives me great freedom. On the way back here in the fourth round, it wouldn't surprise me if I end up going with another wide receiver like Julian Edelman or somebody unless you end up – taking him but that will afford me a tremendous luxury of just grabbing as many shots at starting running backs as I can and, and hoping that one or maybe two of them hit all right um after you selected Devonte Freeman as your third pick carry on Johnson and Derrick Henry went next Patrick Mahomes at 310 first quarterback off the board here I am on the clock considerations for me you know I have Dalvin Cook and Todd Gurley my running backs my starters uh, they're figured out I'm gonna have to think about Daryl Henderson later in this draft and what I want to do to protect my Gurley situation but I think I'm gonna address it right now I get two picks within four there are two run there are two wide receivers I love here really there's more than two there's three I like Keenan Allen I like AJ Green mm -hmm. and I like Julian Edelman a lot I know that most assuredly I'm going to get one of those three guys if I pass on a wide receiver here. I have the opportunity now to take Josh Jacobs in the third round. He would be my starting flex. He would also be protection against anything that went sideways on Gurley. I will have a triple stack of running backs. I think that's a, the right move. I want to try it out. I want to give that a go. I'm taking Josh Jacobs. Unfortunately for me. <laughs> Unfortunately for me because now Julian Edelman will not drop. 
Yeah, A.J. Green and Keenan Allen went next. I was just – A.J. Green in the fourth round. This team 12 can yeah. eat a butt. They're killing me. Their team – I, I do not appreciate them. Yeah, and you insulted them in a really, really mean way. Well, I went as, as crude as I could. But A.J. Green and Keenan Allen, the idea of getting A.J. Green in the fourth round, which is happening in a lot of fantasy drafts, it just seems like stealing. Yeah, it's wild. People are dissuaded from A.J. Green. You know, say what you will about that offense. I just think A.J. Green's too darn good. I mean, there are teams, there are defensive backs in this league that just can't cover a guy it's, like that. It's just injury for A.J. Green. No matter the ups and downs of the Cincinnati Bengal offense, A.J. Green has always been great. So now I have to make a decision here. Am I comfortable in a league half point per reception of making Julian Edelman my wide receiver one? Because I went three running backs. We're very high on Julian Edelman. I think he's just going to be peppered with targets all year long. He's the guy. When he came back last season, he was absolutely, uh, you know, Tom Brady. Tom Brady lives in the intermediate routes. That's where he's going to be. He was the wide receiver eight yeah. uh, across th all the games that he played. So he's not going to drop to you, Mike. He will be my pick here. I'm going to take him over Diggs, take him over Cooks, and we'll see what wide receivers come back to me. But Montgomery, Lindsey, and Ertz off the board. Ertz is somebody that I think some people would have been like, well, are you thinking about Zach Ertz there? I wasn't. Okay. I, I'm of all the of, of the top tier tight ends that could regress. Zach Ertz is at the top of the list. That offense, look, that's you, interesting. Given how much you love the Eagles and that's uh, why and Carson Wentz. That's why you shouldn't be uh, look. If Zach Ertz is guaranteed to repeat his, like, what did he beat? He beat his target total in his career by well, forty he, plus. He he also beat the the most targets of all time to the tight end position. Yeah, look, over 150 targets. Yeah, it's just not going to happen again. And I look, Jason can can like ring the bell for Dallas Goddard. Goddard <laughs> Goddard is a really really good player. Yes, he is. And then you get to say names like Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Nelson Aguilar, Arcega Whiteside. There's just a lot of names in the fold there. So I think Ertz is great, but you're just not going to have a season like that from him again. So I, I didn't want to go tight end and be looking for wide receivers in the fifth and sixth round to start my draft. So uh, your team looks great, Mike. Montgomery, Lindsey, Ertz, your pick right now here at 406. So the, the wide receiver that you passed on, he is still up there near my wide receiver one area. In fact, he is my wide receiver 11. So to start a draft. Who did I pass on? You passed on Stephon Diggs. Okay. I would I would have taken Edelman over Diggs personally, and that might be kind of a hot take out there, which I which mean, I obviously you, you just did, did it too. I just did yeah. Uh, but the fact that I have Devonta Adams and Beckham, I can kind of deal with the streakiness of Diggs, especially considering he is my he will be my flex play, but a very very high upside flex play on a weekly basis. And the running backs are into the situation now where it's one one of the one of these guys in this bucket. Perfectly fine. Are you go would you have taken David Montgomery here if he was on the board over Stephon Diggs? I, it would have been a lot harder decision. I had, I had already mentally moved past him because he he wasn't there, so he's not in the thought process. But yeah, it would have been a a much uh, a, a more difficult decision if the opportunity man was available. All right, um, you took Stephon Diggs, so I went three running backs out of my first four. You went three wideouts out of your first four. Half point per reception league. Your team right now, as it stands, is Adams, Beckham, Freeman, and Diggs. My team is Cook, Gurley, Jacobs, and Edelman. After your selection of Stephon Diggs went Sonny Michelle, Drake, Ingram, Galladay, Woods, Calvin Ridley, Brandon Cooks, Andrew Luck, the second quarterback off the board in this draft, Chris Godwin, Chris Carson, Mike Williams, Tyler Lockett, uh, and here we are, Mike. You're on the clock again. And holy crap, the running backs are disgusting. <laughs> I think I realized I really don't like drafting at 111. <laughs> the wait is so long. It's just yes. it's fun for a second, but every time I took the chance, like I took Cook, hoping maybe Julio would flip back. I took Jacobs, hoping maybe Green or Allen would come back. It hasn't worked out. Um, Mike, what are your? You got to get a running back here. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go with a running back. I've I've considered, I was thinking about, do I go with the tight end? But we still have O.J. Howard, Hunter Henry, Evan Ingram, which Ingram is my favorite of those three. But they're all, you know, in a very, very similar tier. So there is there is a chance that one of those guys 
comes back to me if I'm looking to pull the pull the trigger on the early tight end. But like you said, the running back position is thinning out rapidly. It's already pretty disgusting. So the the top of their of sleepers remaining ADP: Tevin Coleman, Tariq Cohen, Lamar Miller, James White. I'm assuming that you and Jason would be looking strongly at James White here. I think he is for me. He's a massive regression candidate, and it's. It's a jagged little pill that you got to swallow <laughs> every time you draft this player, but he's the starting running back for a very high-powered offense. And thankfully, I don't have Hopkins, so that makes the decision a little bit easier because then I don't have to go all in on the Texans offense. You're reminding me of the last time I drafted against Jason. Right. So I'm going to take Lamar Miller as my running back too, but with Adams, Beckham, Stephon Diggs as my my three horsemen of destruction and makes have makes that jagged little pill go down a little bit easier they're they're my spoonful of sugar where do so you to speak on your rankings where do you have deshaun watson like uh, what number is he at your quarterback deshaun watson is my qb5 okay so he wasn't in a tier here where you would have said 507 he wasn't your number one guy like i think he's number one on jason's board at the quarterback position or number two i mean he, number i would two. assume number two but no, and, and just the way that this team is built, I would prefer to go in on an early tight end than an early quarterback. The, the, I'm more than likely going to be waiting until the absolute very back of the draft to get a QB. Okay, so who are you taking here? I I took Lamar Miller. Did Did you select him? I did. Okay. Well, uh, oh, there we go. All right, so you took Lamar Miller, Tyler Boyd, Deshaun Watson, yep, Watson DJ did go. Moore. At the quarterback position, Aaron Rodgers is the last remaining tier two guy. It's kind of like Luck, Watson, Rodgers, uh, back behind Patrick Mahomes. I'm sitting here at 5'11". Um, my team right now is Cook, Gurley, Jacobs, and Edelman. At 5'11", I need to – I was looking at the wide receiver position, and there was one player that I said if he got back to me at, at 5'11", I would look at taking him here. Otherwise, I was going to think about Aaron Rodgers. I was going to think about a tight end because I've got the quick turn and I didn't feel like there were any wide receivers in the same tier. But that player was Cooper Cup. Now, I'm in a tough position hmm. with Cooper Cup because he's coming off an ACL injury and I have Tad Gurley on this roster. And I, I don't know how I feel about drafting both injured players <laughs> on the Rams. Cup was the one that I would hope would make it through. I could also choose Landry at the wide receiver position or take a shot on some of these later round guys that I love with Robbie Anderson, Dante Pettis, and company. Man. Howard, Henry, Ingram at tight end still available. Aaron Rodgers on the board at 5'11". This is, this is tough. This is rubber meets the road for late round quarterback philosophy here. Aaron Rodgers at 5'11". That seems like a value It's to not me. the worst, but I don't... Th I think the only guy I, I would consider in the fifth would be Patrick Mahomes for me where, personally. Where is um, where's I, Rogers is my number two guy. Where is Rogers going in half point leagues right now? Uh, well, you Rogers is going. His ADP on sleeper is five oh six, about fifty four, so about the same type of spot. Uh, I don't I don't know if I can take a, a, a second shot at an injury situation here. Ooh. Um, so I'm actually going to shoot my shot with uh, Dante Pettis at five eleven. Wow. Yeah. And then I was hoping Cooper Cup would come back around and I'd grab him. He didn't. Uh, Cup, you were hoping Cup would come back? I, I, you as should a, have taken Cup then because Pettis certainly would have come back. Um, that's true. Faux pas. Faux pas. <laughs> Cook, Gurley, Jacobs, Edelman, Pettis. Tight end, O.J. Howard just went off the board. I'm a big believer in Evan Ingram in the passing game, having an advantage at that position in a PPR league. So I think I'm going to take Ingram here and let, let it roll. Is that who you Boo! wanted? Is that who you wanted yes. to get to? You? Yeah. So w when I listed off all those three tight ends, as the there was a probability that was decent that one of them would come back. In fact, all three went in a row. So OJ Howard, Ingram, Hunter Henry were selected. That puts me a little bit on tilts. Rogers. Rogers went right before your pick here. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I just couldn't take the chance on. If I draft Cooper Cup to be my two, Cup is in a position where like he's not a he's not powerful enough at the front of the season to go alongside Edelman, in my opinion. Sure, it's tough. I mean, 
I feel Would like, you have taken Cup there if you were me over Pettis? Yeah, especially if I wanted both. But I think that you could have gotten to the point where you take Cup there and you can get a, a Pettis or Robbie Anderson or Alshon, like guys that can that can fill in well enough that, that you can hold off until Cooper Cup is at full strength. So, man, so let me look at the running back position to see if I just want to start jamming that onto my bench here because I have Devonta Freeman and Lamar Miller. The top options by ADP are Tevin Coleman, James White, Darius Geis, who despite the videos of Darius Geis running straight lines and not wearing pads, Geis is essentially off my draft board currently until I see him in training camp and they're not even talking about hamstring. Even that is still going to take a pretty giant leap of faith to select Darius Geis in the sixth round. So it's tough because there are similar reports on Miles Sanders where he's he's hurt. We don't know what things are going to be. We don't know what the split is going to be between him and so Jordan Howard. Miles Sanders has a hamstring injury. He what he, what happens with him in camp goes a long way. Like I know for a fact that Miles Sanders ADP has been dropping in both regular and dynasty leagues. People are apprehensive and people are really focused on the fact that like Doug Peterson has been this committee guy. Yeah. But, you know, my contention about that backfield in Philadelphia has always been that he's a committee guy by necessity, not a committee guy by design. Mm -hmm. He right. has Wendell Smallwood, Josh Adams, Corey Clement. I mean, these are fair points. The, the, these are players you have to mix and match to put yourself in a position to win. They drafted Miles Sanders very highly in the draft. Um, at 606, it's an interesting spot to get him. I mean, you get him two rounds later than someone like David Montgomery, a rookie with opportunity in Chicago. So, um, and, but to, not to, it, I mean, I'm not trying to talk, talk no, you no, into no. him. But ADP wise, well, he was the player I was leaning towards drafting. ADP wise, I would be reaching to take Miles Sanders here. But, and there's wide receivers, you know, I, I really liked, I've already mentioned him, Alshon, Robbie Anderson, those, those type of players. But other than a bye week situation or an injury, like they're not, the wide receivers I take here are, I'm not planning to play them over my big three. Like that would be such a rare and red alert situation. So I think I'm going to go with the running back to keep trying to get more, more and more tickets to, for someone to pay off. Well, I was going to say, you're in the identical situation that I'm in dart throw-wise. At the at Yours are running back-wise. Right. Mine's going to be wide receiver-wise, where I feel like Gurley, Jacobs, and Cook, I, I, they're going to be enough for me. I don't have to focus on that position until later. So you did take Miles Sanders. I love your team. It sucks. Oh, thank you. Your team's great. Uh, Mayfield, White, Watkins, Daryl Henderson off the board at 6'10". Geis Landry finishing out the sixth round. Jeffrey Ebron Penny at seven oh three. I was a little later was, than normal. Was hoping that Rashad Penny got back to Matt me. Ryan, Latavius Murray, uh, Robbie Anderson off the board at seven oh six. I know he's a player you like, Mike, but uh, yeah. you may be taking your shots at either tight end or running back here. You're on the clock though. You got to make a pick. Whoo, doggy! Six quarterbacks off the board thus far through this head-to-head -head mock. You also have seven tight ends that are now gone. I imagine tight end is not going to enter your mind. No, it, at it's all not at I, this point. So, I don't. I'm not going to go with this strategy, but I just want to talk it through a little bit here. I just took Miles Sanders. Jordan Howard is there as well. Would you give any consideration to just loading up, seeing if you have the guy or if if they both have standalone value? There are probably. A couple of teams where I would look at doing that, but that, from experience, that that just doesn't work out very often. Other than if your objective is to load your bench with players you can't drop, that's what <laughs> right. happens a lot of right. the times. I mean, last year there were teams that had Carson, Penny, um, Davis. Right. Well, what were you going to do with them? Did you drop Penny? Did you drop Davis? Maybe eventually you did, but you were really hamstrung as a friend. Like that's one of the things that. I don't know if you're going to be in a situation where Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard, what are you going to do? Howard are going to win the job? What's probably going to happen is Howard's right. going to be involved early. Sanders from week five or six on is going to be great, but then you're going to have Howard locked up. So I, you said you weren't going with the strategy. No, I just I'm just to breaking it, it down a little yeah, bit. No, yeah, no, I like it. So 
As of right now, I do have uh, at least a handful of guys ranked above Tevin Coleman. But once again, given the given how my team is shaping up and building, and ADP wise, Coleman is not likely to get back to me. I'm going to take the shot that Coleman ends up as the starting running back and the predominant running back for the San Francisco 49ers. Because if that's the case, then I have uh, I have an absolute big hit, and and then I can adjust accordingly from there. And and like like I said, I'm playing the game of ADP where I have players ranked above him, but I know they're going to come back to me. All right, Tevin, well, that's what you have to do, right? Right. Like, the, the whole essence of having breakouts and, and sleepers and talking about them and bringing them up, you know, on your, your your star player list, you know, the players you're focusing on is not to draft them outside of their ADP. And I'm in the middle, so I have I, I can play the ADP game pretty well. And so after Tevin Coleman with Allen Robinson, Jared Cook, Jordan Howard at 710. I'm back on the clock. I've got a couple picks back to back. And um, when you look at the wide receiver landscape, um, at this point you're taking shots on players to kind of emerge, uh, s several of them. Uh, you could go with Marvin Jones, somebody that we have in our Ultimate Draft Kit as a value. Marvin Jones, two years ago, number nine. Oh, he's a stud, yeah. I mean, number nine overall at the position. And honestly, what the only thing that went wrong, or that went wrong for him last year was that it all went right. Two years ago, much like you know, I'm going to use the comparison of Tyler Lockett, those deep balls, they just worked out far more often than they did not two years ago for Marvin Jones. The 50-50 ball, he just came down with him, and it didn't, it didn't work out. The connection with him and Stafford, which then the news came out about Stafford, the injury that he was playing through, I think Marvin Jones is an absolute value at the wide receiver position currently. And, yeah, the, the other players that maybe by ADP are slightly ahead of him are not players that I'm interested in making, you know, adding to my wide receiver rotation. Will Fuller can't stay healthy. You know, he's a dynamic player, but he's not the one on that team. I think you're going to have a lot of this season where Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay are bouncing back and forth as I far as, as, as potential. So I'm going to take the, what I would view as a stabilizing pick for my roster with Marvin Jones on top of Edelman and Pettis. Um, and then I obviously get another pick quickly after, and I'm making – got to make a gamble here at this pick. Okay. Wentz and Ronald Jones went next, by the way, and I'm back on the clock. I'll just be transparent. Like, th the player that I want more for my roster right here than any other wide receiver on the board, and you've got Fuller, Kirk, Sterling Shepard's on the board, Larry Fitzgerald's on the board. Um, you can go to MVS and take a shot on him. The next highest player on my board is Deshaun Jackson. Okay. He's going to be a starter in what I think is a top five offense in football. But then I'm staring down the reality that, well, I, I think I can get him. I think I can get him in the ninth round. You certainly so that's, could. So that's a gamble. So then I start looking. You know, I want to look somewhere else because I don't think I want to take a wide receiver. Nobody is kind of tickling me in the right places, Mike. <laughs> okay. Oh, Kirk, that's, that's when I make my it. best draft picks. Fitzgerald's not doing it. So I'm looking at uh, at some upside at another position. <laughs> Talking about my armpits, of course. Yeah, and I'm actually going to take I'm going to take a shot on Royce Freeman here in the eighth round. Oh, I like it. I like so that. So I think it, I think it's a value pick on a player that's going to have um, like I'd rather have Royce Freeman than the pick of Jordan Howard at seven ten that was ahead of me in this draft. I'd rather have him than Latavius Murray at seven oh five, even though I think Murray's valuable. I think Freeman has the most like upside in that eighth round range, certainly more than Roy Ronald Jones. So. I'm going to go with Royce Freeman here, and I'm going to straight up just tell you I'm hoping Deshaun Jackson makes it through two Mike Wright picks. Well, he will make it through me. one absolutely because part of my selecting of Tevin Coleman playing the ADP game, I was also playing the paying attention to what other teams have done. And the, the five teams after me that were going to pick twice, four of them had already selected a tight end before I took Tevin Coleman. And one of those, and the team that hadn't, they took Jared Cook. So that that absolutely worked out for me. That I can warm up the music. Wait, what are you doing? I can do a little oh, dance. No, and I can do the Vance dance in the eighth round. Yeah, that's a steal. Oh man, my team is so good. 
A lot has been said about Dante Moncrief, James Washington, Deontay Johnson, James Conner. Where do the the at you know where does the Antonio Brown? Yeah, where production? do the targets go? It, Vance McDonald is the number one beneficiary from that situation. You know he's coming. He, he's got the most time with Ben Roethlisberger of that group of other possible target. Uh, you know targets in the offense. I love that pick. Yeah, so I'm, I'm extremely. I'll be happy. honest with you. When I saw Vance dropping, it mm -hmm. made me disappointed in Ingram in the sixth. I will take Vance McDonald at eight oh six every day of the week over Evan Ingram in the sixth round if I knew I had that choice. Right. Uh, some other highlights from this round, and we're going to have to speed it up to get through the Not remainder of this draft. Uh, Njoku win at the end of the round. Fitz, Shepard, Sutton off the board. Nikhil Harry in the ninth round. And then LaShawn McCoy and Carlos Hyde. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of funny seeing them next to each other in the ninth round of fantasy drafts, hanging on fingertips on the cliff of their careers. And here they are, former first-round picks together in the ninth round. Mike, you're on the clock. So I'm, I'm now going to look at the – uh, I mean, it's down to running back and wide receiver, really. And, man, I want to take a wide receiver, but at this point, for me, it would just be taking, you know, a shot at a, a sleeper. I've, like you said, we we're working with the four bench, so, so pretty shallow. So I'm actually going to keep, I'm going to push that sleeper pick uh, up to another round because there is a player who I, is another starting running back in my eyes. I talked about Darius Geis is off my draft board. Adrian Peterson is going at the back of drafts, and I will be shocked at this point if he is not the starting and predominant running back week one and at least through the first 25% of the season. All right, you took AP. Didi, one of your favorites, went next. Jalen uh, Samuels. That's upsetting. Corey Davis, and then back to me. So um, I am going to take Deshaun Jackson at 9-11. I uh, foreshadowed the pick, wanted to wait around, so I got Royce Freeman by doing that. Deshaun Jackson at 9-11. I believe that fantasy owners will be able to start Deshaun Jackson this year on the reg. I agree. I think he's one of I the agree. most underrated players in fantasy football. Um, he has the fatigue factor that just gets you knocked down draft boards over and over again. Metcalf and Rivers went next. Uh, I'm going to take another shot at the wide receiver position. And I'm going to take MVS. So I'm going to go Deshaun Jackson and Marquez Valdez scaling back to back. This team was built, my team was built on those three running backs at the top, picked up Royce in the eighth, and then I've got shots at the wide receiver position with Edelman, Pettis, Jones, Jackson, and MVS. I think I can breathe easy at the wide receiver position now that uh, sure. Jones, Jackson, and MVS fell to me. All right, and so now with my kind of my final bench pick of this draft, uh, I'm looking at upside at the wide receiver position. I'm looking at a guy who could potentially break out. I don't want Golden Tate where I he's going to be a fine player. You can play him probably every single week. It's kind of incredible he's not gone right. at 10 6 Hey, he's just – people are not super interested in it. But I really like Kiki here. I think that he has the potential to be a, a kind of a breakout but still a little bit hampered. But Curtis Samuel – it has the potential to become the number one wide receiver on that team. He could, he could be the number one option over DJ Moore. He was a reception perception superstar. So I'm going to take the chance that he does break out. And now you've got to select a quarterback, as do I, in the final round of the draft. Several teams taking multiple quarterbacks. I think the majority of them, which puts us in a position of still liking our options at quarterback. Which doesn't hurt me at all. It's, I know, I know. And so – um you know, when you look back at the draft as you make your pick here and you look at considering things like Aaron Rodgers in the fifth round, you know, the opportunity for you to fill out the more important positions on your roster, uh, it just comes full circle here. I yeah. Mean, it, you, you basically get the opportunity to protect yourself. I mean, we both have players with risk on these rosters. Right. And the in, in so full disclosure of that last pick where I took, took Curtis Samuel, Jared Goff, Jared Goff went just three picks before if Goff had been there I would have taken Jared Goff over Curtis Samuel. over Curtis Samuel and then taken my flyer wide receiver with my final pick of the draft uh so uh with the quarterbacks left available you know Lamar Jimmy Garoppolo Cousins but Dak Prescott is there who has done nothing but be a quarterback one his entire career now has a a top weapon even though he will 
I don't believe will be reliable for fantasy in Amari Cooper, but I love Dak. I think he is he's a fantasy force. All right, and uh, my last pick, the second to last pick in the draft overall. I oh, nice. Josh Allen at 11. 11. Uh, I think Josh Allen is a QB1 this season. I feel great about drafting him there. And yeah. um, let's run through these rosters a little bit. I will say this, just like from a top level, before you kind of give your team, I'll give mine. I, it was a little uncomfortable going from the 11 spot in this draft um, because you're not quite the back-to-back position. You take a handful of gambles. Right. I thought for sure, Green or Allen. You know, the uh, this was a team that had taken one wide receiver, one running back, um, and then they were going back to back. I think, okay, you're not going to go wide receiver, wide receiver at the turn, and they did. They went wide receiver, wide receiver. So Green and Allen didn't get back to me. I would feel like on first glance a little bit more comfortable with my team if AJ Green or Keenan Allen sure. was my one over Edelman. Even though we if you had gotten Allen there, that would have been pretty awesome yeah it would have changed a lot for the roster i would have, i think i might have you know i had that kind of rough patch where it's like pettis or cup or ingram i don't like that part of the draft but i feel like coming back later with jones freeman jackson mbs and allen i feel good about it um but this is the first time i've taken todd Gurley in a mock yeah so so, so read down your uh, your roster so i running back i only have four i got dalvin cook todd Gurley, josh jacobs and royce freeman at wide receiver, I have Edelman, Pettis, Marvin Jones, Deshaun Jackson, and MVS. And uh, at tight end, I have Evan Ingram, who I think will uh, you know, benefit from the yeah. absence of Odell Beckham Jr. And then I got Josh Allen with the last pick. I'm very comfortable with this uh, situation. And there's players like Jimmy Garoppolo who weren't drafted or sitting on the waiver wire. If you need to flex and stream quarterbacks, they're there. Mike, how's your team looking? So at the wide receiver position, that's where my powerhouse lies. Devontae Adams, Odell Beckham Jr., Stephon Diggs as my starters, and then Curtis Samuel as the potential breakout guy. So I had to pad those running backs with a lot of options. So Devontae Freeman, locked and loaded one. After that, it's pretty sketchy. But between Lamar Miller, Miles Sanders, Tevin Coleman, and Adrian Peterson, I believe that I can get a second running back in there on a weekly basis. Vance Dance, of course, at the tight end, and then Dak Prescott is my quarterback. I actually don't think our teams are very different in, in as much as, like, from a draft position standpoint, they're a complete inverse wide I say, receiver. We're, look, we're just looking in the mirror. Yeah, the wide receiver running back decision-making process was, was opposite. I like your team a lot. I think you got value. I believe in Freeman. Um, all right, that is it for today's head-to-head -head half PPR mock draft. Again, a reminder, you can – draft mock draft to your heart's content over on sleeper and uh you know take a shot at every position you know there are a lot of people that write us and say what's the right spot to pick right you know i get to choose a lot of leagues they don't just you know if you finish last you get to choose your pick as opposed to just getting the first pick in the draft they want to know where to go based on how this draft went you should draft at seven Cause my, oh, because you love is, your team. Oh, uh, I I prefer to be. Well, Melvin Gordon. You is, have is screwing it up. All right, so let's do this before we get into our pristine auction deal of the day. And um, break down what went wrong. I'm gonna break down what went wrong on your team. Okay. You do it for my team. Okay. So you get a, the, We get to attack one another. I think where you're obviously facing your crisis is the running back position. I mean. Devonta Freeman, you have to take make the gamble that he is a one for your roster. Sure. Beyond him, Miles Sanders could take him some time. Tevin Coleman, we don't really know. Adrian Peterson, even if he's given the keys to the castle, it's a Washington Redskins castle. And Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller has been has shown that he can do it. What happens in that backfield? You may have to find some opportunity on the waiver wire at the running back position as the year proceeds, and you better hope Devonta Freeman stays healthy. Your wide receivers are on lockdown and, and are incredible, and the value you got on Vance is great. And I'll say for your team, where it could go right, if Todd Gurley is Todd Gurley, then your team becomes nearly unstoppable because you have Dalvin Cook and the number one, who could be the number one overall running back in Todd Gurley. The wide receivers, it's, it's tough because your backup three between Marvin Jones, Djax, and... Marquez, they there's there there will be weeks where all three of them liter all three miss where I, I I think they're startable on a weekly basis but you know what they are where 
They could go off or they could vanish and give you 20 yards and one reception. So that's where I think you will struggle. And and if and that's assuming that Dante Pettis is who we believe he will become. So you, you're, but it, it's fine because you, the waiver wire will be. Don't worry, just, Mike. Pettis has 27 career receptions. I think something <laughs> like that. That's enough of a but, sample size. What's also nice about both of our teams, we know where we are going to attack the waiver wire. We don't have to have prioritize. Go okay. I'm just gonna try and take the best available guy, even though he may not play. I know what I'm going after. If there's a breakout running back one who's the top waiver uh, candidate after week one, I'm going hard in the paint. Yeah. No, it's good. And it ends up that way. You took best available. I mean, that's that's kind of what happened here. You didn't necessarily go into this draft saying, I want wide receiver, wide receiver. You were shocked to see Beckham on yeah. the board in the second round. Um, all right. Now well, that was fun. Pristine deal of the day. <laughs> what's what's the deal of the day today? The deal of the day is an Alvin Kamara san, uh, Alvin Kamara signed New Orleans Saints jersey, and um, I got to be honest with you, seventy three dollars. Oh, somebody ate their mushrooms and powered up by powering down the price of that signed jersey. When you take Kamara? when you take mushrooms, like I know it worked out for Mario. But generally, like that's the kind of thing that would let you probably sell something for way less than it's worth. Yeah, maybe. So maybe we're on to something here. <laughs> I don't know if Pristine would be very happy with we, the illusion that they're on mushrooms and that's why they're selling these. Well, these up. are Super Mario mushrooms. These are, they are regulated and they do one thing. They, they make you grow three times your size. And make the price one third the, the price. <laughs> All right. Yesterday, Alvin Kamara signed jersey, $73. Check them out. PristineAuction.com. If you use the code BALLERS on sign up, you get five bucks off your first auction, your first purchase on the platform. So check it out. And uh, look, it, we're done, Mike. We we're did done. it. Jay we Grizz. made it to the end. Jay Grizz is. Uh, the Bear did not have much to say today. No, I he did. He whispered to me a little bit. Ooh, was uh, he giving you hot picks? He wanted me to take Trubisky over <laughs> Josh Allen. I'll tell you that with the last. Oh, pick. Jay Grizz. Yeah. Oh, he's up to shenanigans. All right. Have a good one, Foot Clan. We'll be back on Tuesday. Jason will be back, and um, we'll finish up these divisional breakdowns. Absolutely. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.